Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Very important thing here. The person, the brother who emailed us, Mahmoud Chaudhary, he mentioned one person's name and he said that that person, he's a, the biggest, greatest Islamic scholar in the world and who knows about Christianity, who knows about other religions more than anyone else, etc., etc. He doesn't follow any particular school of thought. So why do you, how can you say that one needs to follow a school of thought? First of all, let me deal with this, that he knows someone who is the greatest scholar. Any person who comes on TV and who gives lectures and he speaks on comparative religion and he is a very authentic person, he, he, know, he knows a lot about comparative religion. It does not mean that he is a great scholar at the same time. Very important thing here, my dear brothers and sisters. When we look at someone and we listen to his lectures, listen to his speeches on TV or whether in the mosque, and he speaks on comparative religion and he speaks like no one else speaks on the same subject it doesn't mean that he is the great Islamic scholar no in that specific field he might be the greatest he might have a lot of knowledge he might be the best in that specific field comparative religion but comparative religion taqabul al adyan is just one subject of many subjects in Islamic studies for example I will give you here an example if someone is a good surgeon, doctor, surgeon. He is an expert in surgery. It doesn't mean that at the same time he's a good cardiologist. It doesn't mean he at the same time is a good physiotherapist. It doesn't mean that he's a good, at the same time, the best uro, uro, urologist. No, it doesn't mean that. If someone is good in one field, then he is good in that field. doesn't mean that he is generally overall the best doctor in the whole world. He might be the best in, in surgery, but he is not the best in other fields. So anyone who is good in comparative religion, it doesn't mean that he, at the same time he is an authority on hadith, he is an authority on Quran, he is an authority on fiqh jurisprudence, he is an authority on history. The person you have mentioned, you have named, he made the biggest blunder in the terms of hadith, in the, in the history of history. He made the biggest blunder. None of the scholars have ever said that Imam al-Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu went for a political war. In fact, this person said so, it meant that in history he is very, very weak. He doesn't have any knowledge whatsoever. So when we look at some person like that and we listen to his lectures, we have to bear in mind that this person might be good in one field, but overall it might be possible that in Hadith he doesn't have any knowledge, in Quran he doesn't have that strong knowledge, in Fiqh he is not that uh, authentic, in Sirah he is not that authentic, so he, make, he might he might made blunders, make blunders in that field. At the same time in comparative religion he might be well اور سیم ٹائم اسی طرح ہے یہی بندہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے میدار پاک کے حوالے سے حضور کی زندگی کے حوالے سے یہ بندہ کہتا ہے کہ وہاں جا کے وہاں جانے کی حاجت نہیں ہے وہاں کچھ طلب کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے وہاں دعا مانگنے کی وہاں دعا تو ہم جہاں مانگے گے اپنے خالق سے مانگے گے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا وسیلہ اختیار کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے وہ تو مر چکے ہیں ناؤزو باللہ میں انزالک انہیں ہماری ضرورت ہے دعاوں کی اب ذرا اندازہ کر لیں کیا ایسا انسان اس کو دوسروں میں تو واقعی وہ سند ہوگا دوسروں میں تو سند ہوگا کہ جو ہمارے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو مانتے نہیں ہیں ہمارے مسلمانوں میں وہ سند کبھی نہیں ہو سکتا ہے I would like to mention here at the same time اس بات کو بھی ضرور جی جی at the same time میں شیسرا شاہ صاحب نے فرمایا شاہ صاحب has mentioned that this person had regarding the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم given very very blasphemous remarks he has said that نعوذ باللہ من ذالک رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم we don't he needs us the prophet peace be upon him needs our supplication needs our dua inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajun how sad and how how weak and how ignorant can one person be that the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم the Quran specifically mentions ولو انہم that no matter until the day of judgment if one follower of the Prophet ﷺ has done any mistake has done a big sin forgiveness this person Ummati needs to go to the Prophet ﷺ and then while he is there at the blessed grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he must ask Allah forgiveness. But even then, Allah will not forgive him unless فَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa intercedes for him. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stalks in, for the, in favor for him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa supplicates for him. Then, لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ Only then Allah will forgive you. So the person who says some, something like this about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can you think that that person is a great scholar? إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا لِلَّهِ يعني یہ بندہ یہ کہتا ہے کہ وہاں جانے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے وسیلہ اختار کے خدا کہتا ہے جاؤ یہ کہتا ہے نہ جاؤ وہ کہتا ہے اللہ کہتا ہے جاؤ 
مصطفیٰ کا وسیلہ اختیار وسط فر الحم الرسول لبد اللہ تواب الرحیمہ جب مصطفیٰ کریم تمہارے لیے زبان ہلا دیں گے اونٹ ہلا دیں گے ارشاد فرما دیں گے دعا کر دیں گے تو تمہاری بات بن جائے گی اور بات ہی نہیں بنے گی لبد اللہ تواب الرحیمہ خدا بھی مل جائے گا 